Hello and welcome back to the Linux Panic YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be going over the process of how to install the Pi-hole network ad blocker and also networking tool on a Raspberry Pi, believe it or not. So let's get into the video. Now, Pi-hole has been around for quite a while now. I remember initially installing this back on this Raspberry Pi, or that we're going to be installing on many, many years ago. Now, it is still around nowadays, and it's still very much used, so we're going to go through the process of getting it set up. So first thing is we need to um, log into our Pi, as I can as you see here, I've logged in remotely. And we're going to be getting the install script from the Pi Hole GitHub repository. Now, we could go through the process of One Step Automated, or the manual, because it's going to be easier to be going through the One Step Install process, that's what we're going to be doing. You may have noticed how the video looks a bit funky, and yes, it does because I am on a very I'm on a monitor from about 2007, so things do look a bit different. See here, script called and on root privileges. We may have to adjust that. First things first. I'm going to bring this up. Now this may take a bit longer to do because, as we saw, as we can see at the top, uh, it is running on a Raspberry Pi or a BCM. 2835 with four cores at one gigahertz with less than the full 1000 mibibytes of RAM. It is technically one gigabyte, but it's not the full one mib one gibibyte as it would be. So I currently have the Raspberry Pi plugged into my plugged into another screen. Screen off means I can turn that off. Well, the Raspberry Pi has gone into means ever mode, so I can turn off the monitor. But what this is doing is just downloading everything. As we can see here, it sees that this is a ARM based system. So it's got the ARM HF. And now what it's going to do is going to grab everything it needs to. Now, this may depend, this may very much depend on your hardware. As we can see, this is taking a little bit of time because there is also 121 updates it's suggesting that I get. So we've got to wait for the process to go through, finish off. As you can see here, it's saying there is a supported OS detected, which would be the Raspberry Pi, which would make sense considering this is what it was initially designed for. It would be rather disingenuous for this to still be called Pi Hole if this was no longer supported by a Raspberry Pi. So we now just have to finish, as we can see here, the installer will transform your device into a network wide ad blocker. Yes, please. The Pi Hole is free, but powered by your donations out there. Pi Hole's service only is static IP address. Yes, it will be a static IP address. Um, yes, set static IP address using the current values. Uh, it's bot. No, it will not because I'll set it up to, so it won't do. We will select an upstream DNS provider. In this case, Cloudflare because I prefer Cloudflare as my as my uh, DNS provider of choice. If it's not being my own, we will include the Stephen Black's unified host lists and we will install the admin web interface and the web server for the admin web interface. And we will now allow the logins and we will show everything. So, as we can see here, uh, it is possible to just go yes, 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 all the way through and not have to look any of it. I could have just closed my eyes and hit enter the entire way through, and that would have got me Google as my DNS provider as the upstream DNS provider, and then the installation of everything I needed without having to touch any of it. But I decided to stop and have a look at what I'm doing first. So as we can see here, this is currently unpacking the Lite web server with Lite uh, HTTPD. I believe that's what that is. I could be wrong. It could be a, a SSH thing. I don't really pay too much attention to the name of packages if I'm not if I'm not installing them manually. As we can see here, it's just going through and downloading, uh, what's it? unpacking and preparing to unpack and setting up uh, deb packages for the ARM version, because again, we're running the ARM version of this on the Raspberry Pi model 2 revision 1.1. 1 .1. So, whilst we wait for this, let's find the Raspberry Pi revision RAM, well, well, Raspberry Pi uh, 2 so this is running on old hardware and when i say 
old hardware. So it's the Raspberry 2, Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. So we're looking at hardware that's at least, at this point, seven years old. So the fact that this is just taking this in its stride, mostly, is a good thing because of its age. Now, once we get this fully done and installed, what we'll have to do is we will have to go to the IP address provided, which will be the one I've already set up. And from there, we can then add devices onto the Pi Hole. And then, well, the network will not onto the Pi Hole, yes. And go through, as we can see here, it's just <coughs> getting uh, everything set up. It's getting all the INI files ready for us. As we can see, it's finished with the creating, setting up, and packing, and preparing. It's just done all of that now. Now it's just sorting out the configs. As we can see here, it's doing new versions because it's not done any versions to begin with at all. So this is standard practice for new software. You want to do a new version straight off the bat because there is no version at all. So this is correct. As we can see here, this is doing PHP, um, PHP modifications. See here, it's now just doing sockets. So they should be getting towards the end soon as that is getting towards the end of the alphabet. And uh, there is some POSIX stuff there. I always like to see POSIX in Linux software because it means it won't just, uh, it will be more than just available to Linux or just Windows. I like just seeing POSIX everywhere because it means someone's put in the time and effort to go, you know what, let's make this work elsewhere. So once this is finished, be prepared to log into the, and log in via the web interface. So whilst we wait for this to finish, uh, I will return. Oh, I will return once this has done. Okay, now that we have returned from the process being finished, as we can see here, if you've not already done so, give the above IP should be set to static. We are given our interface, which is either pihole.pi.hole slash admin or the IP address with the password, which I've already written down. Uh, as we can see here, going through the settings, problem solved. We can also copy the password here, which I'm going to do to make my life just a little bit easier. Now that we've done this, we can do, should be able to click this. I guess not, so we're just going to go open link and feed this the password. So in this case, it's just, uh, remember me for seven days, log in, save. And as we can see here, we're currently up and running. We currently have two clients, one of them being my phone, or the local host and the Ethernet Zero device. So if we have a look here, we can actually come to the dashboard and see what's currently running. We have five total queries. There are 174,000 entries on the advertisement list saying, hey, look, don't do this. Thank you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to prepare my phone for having a quick peek. So my phone is set up correctly here. 1.68, yeah, there we go. So if I were to open up a app on my phone that is known for us, having an app where let's do, uh, let's golf bat. So we should get a click on second. So we should get a click on. In this case, there are no adverts. I misjudged that one. We, we will go to a casual, hyper casual game as we can see here. There are now currently seven queries. That's good. There we go. So now we are starting to get some results. This is over the Ethernet Zero device. So in this case, this is my phone. It's not over eth0 and that's for sure uh, i can guarantee that one that's not over eth0 but i can confirm this is currently working so if we do go back to the dashboard should get a increase in advertisements in a second i said we should but this is currently working if we have a look at the settings for example we can see here we're currently running the version 
and yes we want to accept the upstream that's perfectly fine we could add our own upstream dns server so for instance we could connect this to another pi hole and just pi hole circle but in this case we're not uh, we also have the options to set up dhcp and run our own dhcp server off of this now because it's raspberry pi i wouldn't exactly suggest doing that but it's possible so with our privacy it's just hey hey look this is how i want you to deal with the privacy and this is how i want you to deal with backing up and all, all that now with the tool we can have a look at the diagnosis just see if there's anything wrong we could update the database which we're doing now triple successful <laughs> that's me sorry this is just going through the process of making sure that everything stayed the same there is currently ignoring one domain entries and uh, out of a possible 174,287 that is a rather lot but we can search through the ad list if we wanted to the audit log to see what has and has not been requested so in this case it's just a load of stuff that's uh, an ip address for somewhere don't know where but it's for somewhere and we can have a look at the network so what we can see here is my phone if i check my phone is going to die momentarily so we're gonna to have to be a bit quick but yes that is my phone that is connected so for example we can see yes it's submitted a load of requests to there and it has been accepted by all of them I'm going to remove that double because otherwise it might not work yes currently it is working a-okay if i now open up speed test this should also say hey look no we can come here we're now 35 denied requests 36 denied requests all of that's just from my mobile phone so imagine what you would get from running this all the time so if we just say hey look um run this currently see there is some progress being done there's been some being let through some that haven't there are currently two active clients one of them being a local host of course so if i add this computer on for instance and say network settings uh, i want to go to ip address please and thank please and thank. so we want to disable the dns we want to go to 0.8.1.8 we confirm which we can confirm is that and then say okay take me to bing.com Bing.com. I would never go here normally. However, object. As we can see here, this it's not as filled with adverts, which is good. If we do msn.com, believe it or not, this is still a website. I don't know how, but it's not absolutely chock a block full full of paid adverts, and that's the thing. This is it does cut down massively on the ram it in your face advertisements as we can see here it's currently adding having a little change about but it is significantly better as we can see here it's just saying hey look there's devices here that's my that's actually my computer but actually getting a response from it is another thing entirely but there we go this is a functional and working pi hole as you would expect it to be work, working and functional there are a lot of there's a, there's a lot of things you could do you could go through and set specific things so for example if i say oh i don't know my phone give it like a comment or something and then just say hey look this new client i could add groups i could set up own main management so say hey look block pornhub like from this device who knows you could add in your own ad list for example so you could just say hey look block these these domains all the time instead of just part of the time that makes it easier for doing customization you can disable the blocking you can as we can see we can set up the local dns so you can have so you could technically speaking have your own intranet instead of um, having to deal with setting up professionally you could just set up a quick hey look ask for this take me to that server or, or what have you if you're running a server at home you've got plenty to do from, go through as you can see, we've already had 56 results, and a lot of them have been for CNAME, Google's, 
uh, google.com.onion for something. That one's definitely a bit weird. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Someone, uh, so, uh, something I opened asked for Google. So I'm guessing that's probably owned by Google. Apparently a severe failure. So if we do take a quick look at that. It's it's definitely something. Yeah, that's definitely something. But it works, it's functional, so... Hey, what's not to love? Anyway, this is just one of the... One of the possible uses you can use with your pie hole. And you go from there with it. Anyway, I would like to thank you very much for watching. I have been Nick. You have been amazing. And I do hope you have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.